Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lisa and today we're going to be talking about beauty sponges. And I found this guy and I couldn't resist because it is a diamond that looks like marble. And I'll show you why I couldn't resist. This is the paperweight that goes on my desk. I got this at West Elm like six years ago. I love this thing. It's a diamond made out of probably not marble, but definitely some type of very, very heavy, heavy stone. So I thought we could have little twins. Anyway, so I want to test this sponge out today and see how different it is from the Beauty Blender for performs as well as the Beauty Blender. I also have a couple of other uh, makeup sponges in my collection. Um, so I've just got my normal little Beauty Blender here. I also have um, one of these guys. It's the little, I'm sure you've seen these at Target. Um, these are by Real Techniques also, who also makes this cool little diamond guy. And then I have the Cake and Bake by Vera Mona. This one um, I got at Sephora. Um, this one is more for um, kind of doing like that baking thing, um, but hey, let's play with it too and see if maybe this guy, since it's got so many facets and um, these like edges, see if this can kind of perform what this one does as well. I don't really bake a lot, so we'll just try it out and, you know, see how it goes. But I'm going to go ahead and open this guy up so we can see it in all its glory. I almost don't want to use it because I just think it's so pretty. And I know that it's going to get dirty. I mean, I do wash my beauty blenders. I wash, um, I wash all my brushes and everything. Um, but it's just so pretty. I just, I don't know. It's going to get dirty. Even if I clean it so hard, it's probably not, it's probably not going to be in its original state. I'll probably have to go buy another one just so I can have a pristine one because that, that's totally something I would do. But anyway, I'm going to go wash these, and then we're going to just see how they go. Um, I already have primed with my poor professional, so we are ready to lay down some foundation and some concealer, and then we'll try with a little bit of powder, too. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I got them all damp and ready to go. Here they all are. They're so much bigger now. If your sponges don't grow when you get them wet, and I found those are usually not the better ones to use for makeup application. Anyway, let's dive in. Okay, first I'm going to go ahead and start with the new one. I'm just, oh God, it's going to get dirty. Anyway, it's okay. I'm going to go in with my tried and true Lancome Tint Idol. I'm in the shade 160W. Wanted to go ahead and use foundations and concealers that I know work for me to give this little guy a fair shot. So I'm just going to put on, let's just do the cheek for now over here with this guy. So it's got these different facets and the back of this thing says that the larger flat sides function as a wedge to apply makeup to larger areas and the top is to buff and blend for a flawless finish. The pointed tip covers small imperfections and the flatter small sides work around eyes, mouth, and brow bone. So we're gonna go, um, I think we're just gonna go in the top and see if we can just blend this. And see how we're gonna blend. I mean, it seems to be doing a pretty good job. I am gonna do my beauty blender on the other side though, because I really wanna see what the difference is. So that's blended pretty good. Let's go in with the beauty blender on the other side of the cheek. Let's just see how these guys stack up. I mean, this thing, this guy is really, really soft. Um, which I'm a little surprised at since it's got all these facets. Um, it's a little softer than the Beauty Blender, but I'm not really certain that that's a good thing. I mean, the, the purpose of these sponges 
is to press the makeup into your skin but then to pull out the excess so you don't get too much product on your face. Um, I mean, I'm so used to the Beauty Blender, so it's a little hard to tell, but I mean, this side does, I mean, it's blended. It's, it's doing what it's supposed to do, but I just, I actually feel like this side is, it's blended out better. Let's keep going. Use it for some different applications. It will go onto the forehead on this side this little guy. Let's see. I think what's I think this flatness is really kind of throwing me off. The beauty blender is like such a little egg that it's just it's kind of throwing me off here. Maybe I should maybe try the side here. That feels a little more normal to me doing it with the side. And I just I don't know. I'm feeling like it just feels odd because of it's flat where everything here is curved. So I think it's it's just throwing me off a little bit. Let's do the forehead with the beauty blender. Over here. I mean, maybe it's just because I'm so used to my beauty blender um, that this just feels more natural to me. But I do feel like when you get to the tip of this beauty blender, like when you're when you're poking or when you're pressing in with this, the tip still feels um, fairly firm for a sponge. And then when you go in with this one, the tip just really kind of collapses. It just it just doesn't feel as firm. Um, so I'm just I'm not sure if that's making a difference. It definitely makes a difference in the way that I, it feels as I'm using it. Um, yeah, this one just feels, this sponge feels more dense, and this one's, I mean, like, this one's definitely more squishy. So I I do feel like I really like a denser sponge. Um, I just feel like they perform a little bit better. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead. We'll do the chin. We'll give the Real Techniques one the whole chin. Yeah, I just, I think it's these rough edges. They're just really, really throwing me off. Sorry, I went over there. Okay. All right, now let's try the nose. Ooh, how's this going to go? We'll, put, we'll do the beauty blender over there. I just feel like this tip on this thing is just not firm enough. It's not as firm as I want it to be to press the product in. I just feel like it's not even really blending. It's just like kind of sticking there. And then with the Beauty Blender, I feel like, I mean, that's just totally blending it out because this tip is just firmer. I mean, I feel like I have to go over here with this one to make it look normal. I mean, I'm not an expert makeup application person, but... I mean, I do know what I like and how I feel when I use the products. This thing is just, I just don't think it has the firmness that I need to get my product like pushed in to my face. And I'm so sad because it's so dirty. I mean, I'm going to clean it, but it's just so dirty. I just, I just don't know. This just feels so much better. It really, really does. Now, Real Techniques does have this little guy, um, and you can usually find these in a two-pack at like Target. Um, wow, this one, this one feels better than this one. It's like this. I love the idea of this, but this is just it just collapses, and then this guy, this guy feels much more just like a, a beauty blender. Um, yeah, definitely. Okay, well. That's kind of disappointing. Or either if I can get it really clean, I can use it decoratively. Um, okay, well let's try. Now let's go to our concealer. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with my uh, Lancome concealer as well. And 
Let's just see how this goes. We're going to go with the real techniques first. Because this is where this one should shine because it's got this pointed tip. I mean, this tip does work. You know, it gets in these little cracks. I'm going to go ahead and bring this onto my lid so I won't have to prime them later. I mean, that seems to be blending. I mean, it's probably got a little too much product. I probably went a little crazy with the concealer when I dipped it in. Hmm. Okay, let's see if the Beauty Blender does this any better. That's kind of looking a little scary right now. Um, I usually put my concealer on with a small Beauty Blender. Um, so this is this does feel a little different to me. But once again, I just feel like the firmness of the Beauty Blender really helps to push the product in a little bit better. And I do feel like it's blending out better. Uh, my eyes are like real. My eyelids and stuff are really dry lately, so it's not going to look perfect. Um, but my eyelids and my around my eye area never looks perfect. So there we go. Okay. I feel like this did the Beauty Blender did a better job at um, pulling the excess product out of the skin, whereas this one just kind of just doesn't seem to really. Pull it out. I don't, I don't know. It just seems this, I think it's just, it's too squishy. It's just too squishy at the tip, especially. I mean, it gets in those little areas, but just because it touches them, but it's so thin right there and it just collapses. It, Yeah, it gets into the little areas, but it doesn't do anything to them. So I just... I'm not, I'm just not loving that. I mean, I'm really not loving anything that's happening with my eyes today, but I'm just really, really not loving that. Wow, I'm not loving anything that's happening there today. Um, but just with how it feels, I'm going to go, I'm still sticking with the Beauty Blender on these. Um, let me go ahead and just, I always put concealer down my nose because my nose basically just, is always a little bit red. I feel like I have a, the nose of a puppy. It's always a little red and a little runny and cold. All right, so got all that on. I'm gonna have to do something with these eyes in a minute. I'm gonna go up to moisturize the heck out of them or something. They are just, oh, they are so dry. So let's just ignore that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to try is we're going to pretend like I have, you know, blush and bronzer and all that stuff on. Because I want to try um, to see how this does, like if you wanted to bake with it, if you wanted to um, especially like cut your uh, contour, because that's kind of what this guy is really good for. Um, so let's just go in. I've just got some uh, Cody Airspun loose translucent powder. And let's see if this can do that, like, method. Hmm? I mean, not bad. I mean, it ne doesn't necessarily um, advertise that that's what this was for, but I wanted to try it out just because it had those uh, facets like that. And then we'll go with the Viramona on the other side. Let's see. I mean, this one... This one cuts a little sharper, but that's what it's for. But this one, I mean, this one can certainly work for that. Um, then we can also set our under eye, which I don't typically do this like this, like with so much product, just because um, this is too much powder for my wrinkles, basically. So let's see if this one will do it too. I mean, this, the Viramona one, I mean, is made for baking, so I feel like that one is probably going to perform better, but this one can do the trick if you don't want to 
you know, get an extra, you know, sponge just for that, you know, this one could do it for you. So normally I would leave this on for, you know, 10, five, 10 minutes, but this was just for illustration purposes. So I'm just going to buff that right off. powder brush and that is good all right so just want to do a little cost breakdown for you here really quick this uh, real technique sponge was ten dollars I actually found it at Kohl's which I'd never go to Kohl's and I don't ever really even look at their makeup but I saw this and it was just so pretty and I'm going to wash the heck out of this because I want it to be white again. Um, typical beauty blender available at Sephora, 20 bucks. Um, sometimes you can get them in, you know, a little gift pack and it'll come with the cleanser and all that stuff. And I actually do like their little soap cleanser. It looks like a little bar of soap and a little round thing. And I do use it. I use it to clean my brushes as well. Um, but you can also just use like a bar of soap. Um, and then this Real Techniques one, I got this in a two pack and it was 10, it was either 10 or $11. You can buy them separately. They're usually anywhere from like six to $7. They have these at Target, they have them at Ulta, um, and they might have them at Walmart, I'm not really sure. The Cake and Bake by Vera Mona, it, I got it at Sephora, and this one is $14. Um, and this one, the this one feels different than all of these. This one doesn't almost doesn't even feel like a sponge. I the texture of this is very very interesting and probably so because it is really meant I think for powder. So it's probably not going to be as porous um, so it doesn't soak up all the powder. Um, but I mean I really like this sponge uh, just since I don't really bake that much I don't get a whole lot of use out of it so kind of depends on what you're looking for. I feel like if you are looking for an overall, you know, just great application for foundation or for, for concealer, I'm still sticking with the Beauty Blender. $20 for a sponge, I know it's expensive, but this guy is worth it. And I always gr get great makeup application with this almost on every single type of foundation. There are very few foundations that I've found really just go better on with a brush. But this thing, it just, it gets it right every time. Just make sure that you actually dampen it before you use it. If you use this dry, it's not going to do anything. Um, so <laughs> that is on the instructions on the box, but you would be surprised how many people will try these things just completely dry. And they're like, what's the point of this? Well, you're not using it properly. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, maybe I'll go, you know, put on all my makeup and you know, maybe I'll fix my hair today. I don't know. We'll see. But hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have anything that you've seen that you want me to try out, please let me know. If you want to keep up to date on the things that I'm trying, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And thank you so much for watching. Bye. Okay, guys, so I just had to update you really quick. Look. I got it completely clean. It's pristine again. I'm so excited. Also, I have to wash my face because I literally have so much powder on it from that attempt at baking that I look like an insane person. I probably look 15 years older than I actually am. So that's a no-go.